love that World of Tankers, I'm Drudel Splits, and in today's video I'm going to be doing another one of my map positioning videos. So the way this is going to work is just like my Faust one, I'll link that in the description down below, but if you're new to the channel, the way this is going to work is I'm currently live in my garage, I have no clue what map I'm going to be doing this video on, of course the title's going to say it, but I'm going to get a random map after this game, hopefully I do not get stuck in Faust because that would really suck, but any other map than Faust, I'm going to tell you guys the positions, I'm going to push my VK-72 right here into, why I'm going to do that, and if I have to adapt to the situation, which 99% of the time you do, judging if the enemy team doesn't work as well, or they push somewhere else, you always have to be ready to adapt. And that's the main issue I find with, you know, replays, that you watch a 7,000 damage replay, YouTuber says, oh, this is where I pushed, I did well there, I side scraped, but that doesn't help you if you play on your own and you're even up against the exact same matchups, the enemy team still might push somewhere else and you can't always guess correctly or judge just by watching one replay that pushing in one spot is always going to be more productive than pushing somewhere else. So I feel showing you live gameplay is a little bit more productive for me to tell you guys what's going through my head and a little bit better for you guys to learn some adaptive situations once you get in a map area. Now Falls Creek is usually a very, very situational map because you either go to the heavy side or you go to the medium side. If you go in the middle, it doesn't really work. So I'm going to push right behind this Vosh. I don't want to go right behind him because of course he's going to get mad at me. But um, I'm just going to, oh, I didn't need to do that. I guess I am going to go right behind him. Uh, let's see if we can tap that 704. There you go. But I'm going to sort of stay in a position like this, have the shells bounce off my upper plate because they're not going to go through as you can see, and I'm just going to hold here. But there's an issue I'm noticing already. We only have a Sheridan that's over on the medium side, but the enemy team doesn't really have a crazy amount of medium, so we should be fine on that area. The big issue is what is lurking behind this corner. There's a 57, there's a grill. Oh no, I wanted to get an HE in that guy. Uh, sadly the Fosh went in front of me there. but. Still got damage out, that's fine with me. We know where the 57 is, so that's fine. E100 and the K91 are already spotted over there, so I'm still just going to hold peacefully here. I've got, you know, nothing to worry about if I just hold here, unless I notice my team really dying. Um, I'm not sure why our patent again didn't go medium. These are very simple things that teams should do that they just really struggle. So let's tap this 57 right in the... Ah, oh, I was going to tap him. Guess not. Uh, we'll see if he pulls out. I'm pretty sure he knew he was spotted after he was out there for a couple seconds. Um, there you go. Tap us in the front track wheel. Hopefully that grill doesn't tap us. Uh, actually, we didn't get spotted, which means the grill is no longer in that position. 704 is already dead. So what that means is I'm going to push straight down into the death pit, I call it. There's the grill. Uh, but I'm going to push straight down into here. There we go. Now I am going to focus this E100. So obviously, just normally show you guys if I were to hold there the whole game, it would work, but you definitely have to be situational depending on what's going to happen. Um, now this E100, even though he did shoot, um, or there you go, we, we have about the same reload. I know he has a little bit quicker than me, but um, I should be able to work with him here. I'm not going to overaggress myself, just going to put my tank in the right situation. I've got a little bit more hit points than him, so I know I can trade, uh, so that's fine. I can trade a shell. There you go, nice little tap, put on our fast reloader. But you can definitely see situations are always changing in Blitz, because I would never tell you guys to ever go here um, in a normal game. I would just never do it. It's something that I wouldn't do. do. Sorry, voice cracks, it is late at night. but. I would never tell you to push here, so this is something that shows you that not every game is equal, you always have to be ready for change, but if you do change correctly, you know the correct targets to push on, you can see it's pretty easy to win a game. So we're doing pretty good here, I'm not too worried about that 57, SU is going to die as well, so this is just a nice, easy game we pulled out here, going to be, I hope, 5,000, we're going to see. Um, hopefully that guy does get killed by me, there we go. So that was a really nice, simple game we got there. But you noticed I definitely didn't just sit in one position. So that was the main goal I wanted to show you guys on Falls Creek, is that pushing to one spot doesn't work. But pushing there and then knowing when to move in, knowing when to push on the enemy, when to aggress, when to fall back, that is how you play the tanks correctly. That's how you pull the cards. 
So that was a pretty good example. And of course, I'm going to pull up Strat Sketch in just a moment to show you guys all the other scenarios you could have done in medium tanks, how the enemy team could have won this. But overall, this is a nice, simple game you saw. And I wanted to pick, by the way, the VK-72 just to show that you don't need damage per minute because this is the lowest damage per minute tank at tier 10. So if you can get damage out in a VK-72, and I wasn't super aggressive this game, just held for two and a half minutes and then pushed in for the other two and a half, used my hit points the way you're supposed to in a heavy tank, that's how it's supposed to be done. So that's sort of how I feel positioning works. I am a little bit disappointed that my Patton and the Sheridan, well the Sheridan did push to the medium side, but the Patton definitely should have pushed to the medium side. You saw that he died. Never ever push a medium tank to the heavy side. It's just not going to work. Unless you're in like a T22 medium, it's really not going to work. So I'm going to pull up Strat Sketch and get up the exact battle we just had, show you guys all the scenarios. So now that we are in Strap Sketch, you can see that I created the exact lineups I did have on the Falls Creek match. And I even made the exact push where the enemy team went, and really the main reason why they did lose is pretty simple once you start looking at all the tanks we had, and the tanks where they had, and where they pushed them. So immediately you'll notice that, yeah, our group is pretty well clumped together. We've got the KPZ, the VK-72, and the KPZ was actually about here, I just couldn't fit it next to the Fosh and the VK without merging them all together. But they were all clumped together, Hori was over here supporting fire, and we had the WT in the back, which is really an ideal group situation. You've got your teammates helping you, you've got covering fire, if you have to back up, you've still got other people that are covering you, so that the enemy team's not going to rush on you. If you look at the enemy team, though, they didn't do such a great job with that, because right off the bat, the Object 704 just decided to rush straight through here, like literally seconds into the match straight down into the pit of death. And first of all, 704 does not have a turret, does not have good gun depression. It does have a good gun, but you're not going to be hitting anybody over here. So the 704 was pretty much rendered useless as soon as it rushed right into the pit of death. The E100 decided, you know what, I'm not going to push to a position over here. I'm going to go straight down, take the little pathway, and go around the pit of death again. And he sort of stayed there for about 80% of the game until right at the last second he pushed through into where the 704 was. And again, that's not very helpful judging that our entire team, other than the M46, which I have no clue what he's doing, and the Sheridan is over on the side spotting and trying to get the T54, the enemy's big guys, which is really what you want to take out first on Falls Creek while you always push to the spot, the enemy's big heavy tanks and the big guns really blew it right at the beginning of the game because now it's a 57 Heavy, a K91, and a Grill. And while the 57 Heavy does have a great gun, my tank does 640 damage, I snap him once, and I back up. And I'm going to be trading 640 for 400 damage, he probably needs to shoot heat to get through my lower plate. So I'm coming out on top, you know, 50% more damage every single shot. Not to mention, I've got my Fosh in front of me, I got the KPZ, I got the Horeen, I got the WT. That means that if any of these tanks were to really pull out, they would pretty much be eliminated as soon as they did that because they don't have the E100 taking these big shots to them, holding the enemy team back. And then what happens is, a little bit later in the match, about a minute later, after I've just been sitting there, sort of relaxing, whittling down the enemy team, the K91 decided, you know what, I lost 600 hit points from the Fosh, I think it was, so K91 now goes all the way around to where the E100 was. So now, literally, it's just a grill where the K91 is, where the E100 would have done very well, and a T57 Heavy versus literally five tanks, because the 704 I'm pretty sure was dead by now, and the E100 and the K91 still aren't even contesting my guys over here. And if you remember, a little bit later, I literally pushed straight on the K91, he died, E100 didn't stand much of a chance, and that was pretty much the end of the match. And the main reason they lost was because they did not have good fortifications right on this line here. This is the most important spot on Falls Creek. You need to position a big alpha tank somewhere like around here where the grill was. The grill was in a decent position. I don't know why he pushed up here. But there's a bush right here where the grill could have easily gotten shots off. But the issue is there was nobody spotting for the grill. Because of course you'd want the 100 in that bush trying to spot me or the Fosh whenever we shoot. But there was nobody spotting. So the grill was pretty much rendered useless. And I think he lost over a thousand hit points as soon as he got spotted because there was just nobody to take hits for him. So the grill died pretty much immediately. And everybody else on their team pretty much followed suit. And that was the main issue that I did find with their team. Especially this SU-12244. I actually created a sort of what they could have done scenario. And you can see I put the 100 in the main heavy spot here. T57 heavy in the same spot. I had all of their big guns sort of lined up over here. 
and I had the grill sitting in the back to try and cover because of course you don't know where the enemy team's going and I sort of fixed up where my team went. So I would of course ran my Sheridan up to this bush over here, I had the enemy team over there, so I would have had my enemy team, if I was running the enemy team, I would have pushed my T-54 parallel to the Sheridan, and that way if the Sheridan pushed out or the M46 got spotted, and the T-54 realized, hey, I've got to get out of here, I'm going to die, the enemy grill would easily be able to cover fire, get shots across on the map, and help the T-54 out. Same for the SU-122-54. It doesn't have armor, it doesn't have gun depression, so it's not really going to work too well on the heavy side. So the best spot for the SU would either to be here, because it can really easily get shots into the enemy team, or my team should I say, if I've had teammates that pushed into here, they could, or pushed around, the SU could easily get covering shots into the side, use its crazy damage from it, finish them off, and as well, it could also push over to the medium side, help out my T-54E1, any issues like that. So that's sort of a good spot I felt for the SU. And then the Object 704, as I said, where the grill could have sat, right in that little bush here. So the E100 is taking the shots, bouncing them, and then he backs up after he shoots, 704 gets another, you know, helpful shot in. T-57 heavy, same spot, K-91 uses this little kill here, because as you guys know, a K-91's turret is very, very strong. Lower plate, not super strong, but K-91's turret, you hide that lower plate, you use your 7 degrees of gun depression the tank has, easily get shots into a vehicle like the Kampf Panzer, VK-72. If you notice, I barely changed anything on my team composition on this side. If you look at the real push and what my envision was, I actually made the good push first and then I put the real tanks and what actually happened. And you can see it's almost identical. And that's why we won the game. It was just because our team worked a lot better. They pushed their tanks in the right positions. And even though we did have uh, one knucklehead that had no clue what he was doing, we still were able to come right through with the victory just because we had the main big alpha guns positioned in one big spot. So that's sort of my envisionment on Falls Creek. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if there's any other spots. But of course, just as advice, if you ever are in a medium tank and you notice the enemy team has more mediums, try and ask for help from a tank destroyer. Try and get them in a position that's going to cover you because I'll still push medium. I'm of course not going to put an object 140 over here. It's just not going to work. So I'll run whatever tank it is. I'll push it all the way over here and I'll position it there. If I spot anybody, I'll immediately turn around, run away. That way my team knows, hey, they're spotted. So there's definitely a lot of good positions you can do on Falls Creek, and it's a very simple map. It's either heavy flank or medium flank. Never, ever go in the middle area. It usually never works. You get shot by the tanks that push up on the side here. The medium tanks over here can shoot you. Just never really go in the base capture area. That's why the T-54 just did not do too well at all. But I hope you guys did like this little segment on Falls Creek. If you learned anything, please let me know in the comments down below. If I didn't put anything in this video that you would have liked to see, also let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button down below. If you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. Let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. But other than that, make sure to subscribe. I hope you're all doing well out there, and I'll see you in the next one.